thank the organizers for the invitation. I'm very happy to be back in Bonn. And uh, so the talk is about smooth, complex phanophorphous. So we work on the C. Uh, let me start with uh, an introduction. Uh, so if X is a smooth phano variety, We know after boundedness that there are finitely many families in each dimension. And we are classified up to dimension three. Dimension one, we only have P1. Uh, in dimension two, we have the pets of surfaces. Uh, so they are P2, P1 plus P1. And the blow ups of P2 in at most eight general points. Okay. And in dimension three, There are 105 families. So the classification of one three first dates back uh, to the 80s. And uh, it's uh, uh, due to Iskowski uh, and the Russian school, uh, also building on the work of Fano in the case of Pika number one, uh, I think in the 70s. And then Maria Mukai, uh, in the case of Pika number bigger than one, in the 80s. Okay. And starting from dimension four, we do not have uh, a classification, and probably we have hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of families. So what uh, we would like to, to have is a good understanding of the behavior and properties of these uh, families. And an important invariant is the Picard number, uh, which is just equal to the second vector number because x is fano. Okay, so after boundedness, it takes finitely many values in each dimension. And uh, so for the pets of surfaces, we see that the maximal Picard number is 9. And for fun prefers, it's a result by Mario Mukai. From 86. So that if we have a fun prefer, with pk number bigger than 5, then x is the product of the pets of surface with P1. <clears throat> okay, so it's easy to see that the product of Fano varieties is Fano. Mm -hmm. And conversely, when a Fano variety is a product, both factors are automatically Fano. So here S is automatically the pets of surface. Uh, so this is how Mori Mukai ended the classification of Fano prefolds. And in fact, since uh, Fano varieties are simply connected, the Picard number of the product is just the sum of the Picard numbers. So we see that uh, the maximal Picard number is 10, 9 plus 1. So in particular, as a corollary, we get uh, that the maximal Picard number of Fano prefolds is 10. And uh, for between 6 and 10, we have only products. Okay, so the result that I would like to present is an analog in dimension 4. Uh, 
So if we have a final form, form. If the <coughs> number is bigger than 12, then x is a product of reflexive surfaces. Okay? So again, in particular, uh, as a corollary, we get, uh, since the picard number of a product is the sum of the picard numbers, so this is at most 18, as a corollary, we get that uh, the maximal picard number of 1 4 4 is 18. between 13 and 18, oh, sorry, we have only products of surfaces, okay? So the first question is, is this uh, condition sharp? Mm -hmm. And the answer is we don't know, uh, because, uh, um, so all known examples, of one of all folds uh, that are not products, uh, say not, mm -hmm. have a row at most nine. Okay. So we do not know what happens in PK numbers 10, 11, and 12. I expect that for 11 and 12, again, there are only products of surfaces. And for Pika number 10, I don't know. I really don't know what to uh, expect. So, can you give an example for rho equal 9? Yes. So for rho equal 9, there's just one known family, which is not a product. And it's obtained in this way. Uh, you start from P4, you blow up eight points. Say so this is X hat. Uh, and then uh, here, this is not FANO, because if you look at the transforms of uh, the lines uh, through two points and also the rational normal cortex uh, through seven of the eight points, this has uh, intersection one with the canonical class. But you can uh, anti-flip them. Yes, anti-flip. Anti-flip. Uh, some curves, and you get the sum of four points. Okay, uh, but in fact, it's hard to prove directly that you can do this. Okay, so this example uh, is due to Mukai, and uh, we studied it in a joint paper with Giulio Codogni and Andrea Fanelli from a few years ago. And to, in fact, we interpret, so this is Mukai's idea, to interpret these varieties as uh, moduli spaces of vector bundles on a del pezzo surface. And then um, the variation of the stability condition gives you a tool to control by rational geometry, okay? So even if the description is very simple, it's hard to prove, <laughs> to control the by rational geometry. So this is probably one reason uh, why we have so few examples? Uh, because um, you should construct these examples with birational constructions, which are hard to control in large Picard number. Okay. But so what, here, what is hard is hard to know that the anti-flip gives smoothness. Or, or... Yes. Yeah. Okay. But now, so it's easy to see that you can do say the say the. the the birational transformation in the complex uh, category. Yes. Because you know the normal bundle, but it's hard to prove that this is fun. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, yes. Is there something that's known and expected in general that if you have a, a fun on any dimension of maximal Picard number, then it should be a product? Is that... No, it's not known. Is it expected? Uh, Good question. I'm not sure what to expect in, uh, in arbitrary dimension. Okay. So I think uh, 
We have already few examples in dimension four. In arbitrary dimension, we have even fewer examples. So uh, we could say that maybe it's why the reason is that there are only products, but maybe we, we just have no enough knowledge. Uh, okay. Yes, so yes, I wanted to say that one point of this is that we have very few examples. Uh, few examples in the range uh, starting from Picard number six. Okay, so what do I mean by few in Picard number six? I mean uh, no product. Uh, uh, in Picard number six, there are 10 known families, seven of which are Tori. And in Picard numbers seven, eight, and nine, there is one family in each row. One known family in each row, which is uh, this example with less points. Okay? So I think that the construction of new examples in this range is a very interesting uh, problem. Okay, so are there more questions? Yes. In those few examples, do you understand like the NEFCO as well? Like, do you have vibrations? Do you have... You know, in this example, the yes. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we can uh, describe everything. Okay. Because it's um, actually mm, very nice. There is an identification of the N1 of X with the N1 of the, the PETSA surface of degree 1 on which you take the vector bundles. So you can describe everything. Mm. Do, you, do you know if what Olivier was asking uh, at least can be checked for toric variety in the sense if I take some reflexive polytope? Uh, yes, for toric varieties it's true, it's known. Okay. So, in fact, it's a, this is a result of mine from many years ago. Uh, if you have a smooth, toric, final variety, uh, the maximal Picard number is twice the dimension, and you get the quality only for products of the Petso surfaces of Picard number four. And I think now there is also a characterization of the cases close to, like to ben Benjamin Neal. Uh, some people have studied this, and there are the ones with the Picard number close to the maximum are characterized. And, uh, but uh, the proof in that case is uh, completely combinatorial. So I was not able to, I should say, I tried hard to, to give a geometrical interpretation and generalize it, but I was not. Uh, so it's a property of reflexive volume. Yeah, so uh, the proof of the theorem uh, is based on my work on final forfaults for many years. So uh, there is an overall uh, strategy and then some case-by-case -case analysis. And uh, what I will do in the talk is I will take as a black box the previous results and try to explain the last part, which is the most uh, recent. Okay. So before I think I need to recall a few notion or notation from birational geometry. So we have X from a four four. <coughs> so a contraction. of X is uh, a subjective morphism, say F, subjective with connected fibers. Uh, with the Y is normal and subjective. And uh, so as usual, F can be birational or of fiber type, okay? And F is elementary if uh, the difference of the Picard numbers is 1. So these are the simplest uh, possible contractions. And then uh, 
So for 1 over rt squared, so we have the n1 of x, uh, which is a vector space of one cycles, and the real coefficients <coughs> after numerical equivalence. So this is a real vector space of dimension typical number of x. And inside here we have the tone of effect in first. Okay, and uh, so since x is final, this is a nice convex rational polyhedral cone, polyhedra of dimension of x. And by classical uh, Mori theory, I would say we have a bijection. So the one dimensional faces of the cone of effective curves are called extreme arrays. And we have a bijection between elementary contractions and extreme arrays, and more generally between contractions of X and faces <coughs> of the cone of effective curves, and the dimension of the face corresponding to a contraction is the difference of the picard numbers, okay? So basically, when rho is large, we have plenty of contractions, okay? Okay, yeah. I'm just, uh, I'm uh, ready to say, yeah. What are the, the similarities of uh, why this is classified or just... Uh, For any contraction? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It depends uh, if, if the contraction is general, why, why may be very singular, okay? Uh, they are uh, studied for elementary contractions, okay? And then it depends if it is a fiber type, divisorial, or small. But uh, I would say that in the three cases, you, we have a very good understanding of what can happen. Oh, yes. yes. All right. So, this is the first result that I would like to take as a black box. Uh, that if we have a final fourfold, uh, if x has a small elementary contraction, So small just means that the exceptional locus does not contain divisor. So it's a birational contraction such that the exceptional locus does not contain divisors. Uh, then uh, the picard number of x is at most 12. Yes. Okay. And now I want to state a second theorem that also is part of the black box, but I need uh, some uh, um, other notation. Um, so let me consider D in X a prime divisor. I'm not assuming that D is most, so it's just a co-dimension one irreducible uh, sub-variety. And if we call, uh, say, I the inclusion, then I induces a natural linear map between the N1 of D to the N1 of X, which takes uh, the class of a curve in D up to numerical equivalence in D and sends it to the class of the same curve up to numerical equivalence in X. And in general, this map does not need to be uh, injective or subjective. And I'm interested in the image that I will denote by N1 of Dx. So you can think of this as the linear span in N1 of X of classes of curves in D. And of course, its dimension is at most uh, the picard number of D. All right. Hmm.
So somehow I want to state a result um, uh, on fan four faults, uh, which contain a prime divisor D where this uh, subspace has a uh, small dimension. Okay, so let me call it theorem two. Uh, fun of all faults, such that uh, there exists a D with D in X. Uh, with the dimension of n1 of dx at most rho x minus 3. So I'm considering fun of four faults, which contain some prime divisor where this linear subspace has for dimension at least 3. These are classified. And in fact, uh, either x is a product of surfaces, or um, the Picard number of x is 5 or 6. And in this case, uh, there are 17 families. Okay, so this here is due to myself from many years ago, uh, where I proved that uh, under this assumption, either x is a product or the Picard number is 5 or 6. And then the classification in the two cases is more, more recent. So it's uh, in a joint paper with Eleonora Romano. We classify the case of Picard number 5 and then in another uh, joint paper with Romano and Secchi. We classify the case of Pika number six. Okay. Okay, so this means that uh, under this assumption we are done. Uh, we can assume, we can reduce to consider, uh, we can assume Uh, property that X has property that we call A uh, that for every prime divisor the dimension of this linear subspace is at least rho X minus 2. Okay. Okay. And now uh, let me state the third result, which is the one the one that I want to explain, uh, the new one. That if X satisfies property A and has no small contractions. Elementary contractions. Then, rho x is at most 12. Okay? So you see that the three theorems, 1, 2, and 3, imply the main theorem. Because if we have, a, if we have a small elementary contractions, we are below <coughs> or equal to 12. If we, are, we do not have assumption A, we are fine, and this uh, fixes uh, the, the last case, okay? And also you see that we have a change in the point of view, so we are not uh, really proving that if rho is large, the next is a product. We are bounding the Picard number for a special class of fun of orphans, okay? So the products of surfaces are treated here, okay? And when we take assumption A, we are removing all products of surfaces with large Picard number, okay? So that's why they do not appear here. Questions? 
Yes. On the index? Index, yes. yes. So, um, Mukai conjecture, maybe let me uh, say for everybody, it's a numerical conjecture on fan varieties of arbitrary dimension, uh, which relates uh, index, Picard number, and dimension, okay? And it can be seen as a strong bound on the Picard number when the index is bigger than one. So basically it says that if uh, the index, maybe it's R, is bigger than one, then the Picard number is at most uh, the dimension, uh, this ratio, okay? So it should be at most uh, the dimension, okay? So this is known uh, in, um, I think, up to dimension five in general. Um, so, uh, the, the, the idea is that fan of varieties of index uh, 1, no, uh, fan of varieties of index bigger than 1 should be simpler. So, you expect a lower bound on the Picard number. Okay? So, in fact, equality is expected only for P1 to the n. Okay? And, um, Yes, so this is open in general, and it's a related problem, but in dimension 4 it's known. I think uh, final four faults with the uh, index uh, bigger than 1 are classified. Okay, did I answer? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh -huh. Okay, now I want to give an idea of the proof of theorem 3, okay? So first of all, uh, it's uh, not difficult to see that this assumption A has strong implications on the possible contractions of X. So we, we use assumption A to deduce information on the birational geometry. And uh, so I will just state them as facts because I'm not proving them, but uh, they are not uh, difficult to, to show. So, so let me say, Consequences of, of A. On contractions of X. Okay, so the first is on possible uh, contractions of fiber type, uh, not uh, necessarily elementary. So if G uh, from X to Z is a contraction of fiber type, then the Picard number of Z is at most 4. Okay? So I don't want to prove this, but let me just say that uh, if the dimension of Z is at most 3, and there it's easy to construct a prime divisor where this uh, linear subspace has very small dimension, like one or two, and uh, in Z. And then by taking the, a prime divisor in the inverse image under G, then you can control the dimension of N1 of the X by the difference of the Picard numbers. Okay, so uh, conversely, you can control the co-dimension of the Picard number of Z. So this is the idea. Oh. Okay. And then the second consequence is on uh, the possible elementary contraction, so that Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
for the second fact. So this uses both assumption A and also the fact that X has no small contractions, uh, mm -hmm. which is either uh, the picard number is a cos phi, or every elementary contraction So basically, I want to say that X can only have one type of uh, elementary contraction, which is birational, is what I call of type 3, 2, which means uh, birational, divisorial. Um, so the exceptional locus is a prime divisor. And this image is a surface. Is a surface. It's like uh, you should think of the blow up of a surface in a smooth uh, fourfold. Okay, so three two refers to the dimensions of the exceptional locus and of its uh, image. Okay. Uh, okay. So and so, since we are not, we are fine with this case. We will assume that X has this property. Okay. Is, uh, uh, of this type, so first of all, we need to uh, study carefully this type of uh, contractions. Uh, so, first of all, I need a further uh, reduction because let me know uh, that if so, this is a prime divisor, so it has its linear subspaces and one of the EX and if it has a small dimension at most 3 then you see that from assumption A which up there you can bound the Picard number in terms of the dimension of N1 of the X for any prime divisor okay so in this case we get that rho X is at most 5 by 8 okay so we, we, we will assume, we can and we will, that for every f, the exceptional uh, divisor has the property that this uh, linear subspace has dimension at least 4. And this is, in fact, a very important uh, assumption. I use it uh, several times. Uh, for instance, uh, this implies that y is fun of 2. So y may be singular, and uh, I will describe in a moment uh, the singularities, uh, the possible singularities of y, but minus ky is Cartier, so here I'm just saying that minus ky is ample. Mm -hmm. And also it has another important uh, consequence uh, that um, different uh, elementary contractions <coughs> have different exceptional divisors. Why is smooth in that case? Sorry? Why is smooth in that case? Why? Smooth? No. <laughs> Uh, no, but uh, yes, I will describe the singularities, but it's uh, locally factorial, mm. mild singularities. Okay. Yes. So here 
I'm saying that it cannot happen that the same prime divisor is exceptional for different uh, contractions under this uh, assumption, okay? And this is important because I will use these ex exceptional divisors, so I need them uh, to be distinct, okay? Uh -huh. Okay, now let me describe the geometry of F. Uh, Assumption A. Keep it like that. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, see the geometry of F. This actually has been described by Andrea Kandisneski. So, when we look at the restriction of F to the exceptional divisor to the surface, the general fiber will be a curve, but there may be isolated two-dimensional fibers, okay? So, F can have isolated two-dimensional fibers, F, and if uh, we consider the image of such a fiber, so this is a point in the surface S, then either Y or the surface must be singular at this point. So they cannot be both uh, smooth, okay? Uh, then Y or S are singular, and why not? But uh, Andreata and Wisniewski classified the possible two-dimensional fibers and for each fiber, they say the singularities of Y and of S. So we know everything, okay? And in fact, Y has very mild singularities, so they are isolated, locally factorial, and terminal. Basically, the best singularities that you can ask for. While the surface S can be not normal at these points. So the surface S can be very singular. Uh, maybe I'll get right. It is an output of the classification, or it is known a priori? I mean, that it is the, the, singularity the singularities of Y are locally factorial. Uh, I think it's a, it just comes from a general results, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the description of the singularities of S. No, it's a local computation, because basically you um, uh, I don't remember. They have a local description. They blow up the two-dimensional fiber and then describe uh, this uh, blow up, uh, factorizing in another way, so they give a geometrical description by a case-by-case -case analysis. Okay. Uh, yes, okay. But outside uh, the two-dimensional fibers, in fact, everything is very nice, because uh, uh, it's just a smooth blow up. Mm -hmm. Outside uh, the two dimensional fibers and 
and uh, their images. Everything is nice, so Y and S are smooth. F is just a blow up. So E is a P1 bundle over S. So for the talk, I will make a simplifying assumption that there are no two-dimensional fibers. Okay, this is just uh, to avoid the technicalities needed to deal with the singularities of S. Okay, so simplifying assumption for the talk. Every F has no two dimensional fiber. Okay? And then the picture is very simple because Y is a fan of orphan. And uh, the surface is smooth, and E is also smooth, it's a P1 bundle on the surface. Okay? Now, what is the strategy to bound the picard number of x? The strategy is to show that s is the depressive surface and this implies uh, the bound because uh, this would give that the picard number of s is at most 9 but then E is a P1 bundle over S, so the Picard number of P is at most 10. And then you see that <coughs> rho X is at most the dimension of N1 of Ex plus 2. But this is at most rho E plus 2, and we get 12. Okay? So this is enough to get our bound, and uh, more precisely, We uh, show that the anti canonical class of S is the restriction of the anti canonical class of Y. Okay? So I say that under all the reductions that we made, this is ample. So this is ample. Okay? So, what do we do? Uh, in fact, now the proof is very geometrical. And uh, so we, we set uh, L to be this restriction to S. And consider uh, KS plus L. So this is the classical uh, type of divisors to which uh, uh, all the theorems of the MMP apply, no? canonical to ample on S. And we would like to show that this is trivial on S. Okay, want. X and Y are smooth in this assumption, no? Yes. So we are just saying that the normal bundle is trivial? No, that the determinant of the normal bundle the is trivial. Okay, okay. But you're right, it's a strong uh, mm -hmm. condition. Mm -hmm. yeah. Much stronger than showing that S is uh, the petal surface.
Okay, now, uh, yes, first of all, recall that we have assumed that, that the picard number of E is at least 4. And so the picard number of S is at least 3. So uh, it's important to, to know that S is not P2 and not a ruled uh, surface. Okay? And then using this, uh, uh, one can show that KS plus L is an F on S. Okay? Uh, and uh, semi ample. And it defines the contraction of S. Which is K negative. This is important. Which means that uh, minus Ks is pi ample. And uh, of course, phi contracts the curves which have intersection zero uh, in this uh, class. Okay, and then, I mean, K negative contractions of smooth surfaces are very well known, so we have basically three possibilities for phi. If it is birational, it is a block of uh, distinct points in a smooth surface. Or maybe an isomorphism. I mean, this is the extremal case where phi is, uh, I mean, where uh, the cluster would be ample. Mm -hmm. Or it is a, if T is a curve, phi is a conic bundle. Uh, because I did not explain. Yes, so uh, I use the cone theorem on S, okay? And then in the part of the cone where K is uh, non-negative, this is non-negative, okay? And uh, if I have a K negative extreme array, R, uh, I know that uh, its contraction cannot be to a point because S would be P2. So I'm using this property. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and its contraction cannot be um, also uh, a contraction to a curve, okay, because it would be a P1 bundle to a curve, and S would be a ruled surface with PK number two. And then it must be a blow up of uh, one curve, okay. And then if I, the point is that I have a curve in the ray which has intersection uh, minus one with uh, the canonical class, okay. And then uh, uh, this is positive, this is uh, minus one, okay. So the intersection is non negative. Okay, so um, uh, it's not difficult to check this, but it is crucial to have this assumption. But a priori, it's not clear that this surface should be even uniruled, right? No, no a priori, we don't yeah. know anything okay. on the surface. I think, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, no, but in law, so we have made uh, plenty of reductions, right? Sure, sure, sure. But in uh, low PKR numbers, you can write uh, many examples of blow ups. Uh, of surfaces which are funnel, where the surface is not a defective surface, yeah. like a K3 or... Yeah, yeah exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, and the last case is when T is a point, and then uh, Ks plus L is trivial. Okay, so this is the case that we want. So we wanted to exclude these other two cases. <laughs> And we do it by constructing many curves which are contracted by phi. So we exclude these cases by constructing uh, many curves, many, uh, contracted by phi. So this must be a curve uh, 
What does it mean to have intersection zero with this? It means uh, that the curve has the same anti-canonical degree in S and in Y, okay? Because it means exactly, where is L? That uh, minus KS dot C is equal to minus KY dot C in Y. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it is enough to construct three. And this will be irreducible curves. Distinct, contrasted by phi, and intersecting each other. Okay, so that the union is connected, because then you see we, we, it cannot be a blow up, because every fiber of positive dimension is irreducible and it cannot be a conic bundle because every fiber has at most two components. So, so it's enough to construct uh, these three curves contracted by phi. And to do this, we use, um, so far we, we use just one contraction. This is not unreasonable that we can do this uh, just using one ray because it will be a too strong uh, property. Uh, so what we do is we intersect um, the exceptional divisor in X with other exceptional divisors. Why couldn't it be an Itzebrook surface where you blow up many points in, in, uh, in a fiber? That will not be K-negative. So it's not a, K, a conic bundle. I'm not sure in the studio. No, question. yes. Uh, oh, okay, oh, I see, I see, I see. K-negative. Okay. Because L is ample. Yeah, yeah, sure. <clears throat> okay, so what we do is um, we consider in the cone of effective curves the extreme array R corresponding to our contraction, and we look at two-dimensional faces containing R. So if we draw a section of the cone, which would be a polytope, R is a vertex, and we are looking at edges uh, coming out of this vertex, okay? And uh, so there are many of them, at least uh, rho minus one, I would say. And uh, if we consider the contraction of such a face, say R plus R prime, then the difference of the picker numbers is two. And so if G is of fiber type, Remember, I said that as a consequence of our assumption, we know that if we have a fiber type contraction, rho z is at most 4, and so rho x is very small, at most 6, and we are done. So we can assume that for every choice of the two dimensional phase, uh, every g is birational. Okay, and then we look at uh, R prime is again of type 3, 2. So it has exceptional divisor E prime, which is different from E, again by our reductions. <laughs> and then I claim that, so I look whether these divisors are disjoint or not, 
And I claim that uh, there may be this joint, but uh, only for few choices of the two-dimensional phase. So what I say is a fact that uh, since we are assuming this by A, uh, E can be disjoint from at most two other exceptional divisors. Okay, so if E prime is disjoint, we just change uh, the phase. We can find many where E prime intersects E. And now I want to explain how they intersect. So I will just make a drawing because my time is almost over. And so that you can see where the curve, uh, curve contracted curves come from. And then we have something like this. So we have. Um, then I claim that the intersections of E with curves in R prime and of E prime with curves in R is zero. I'm not explaining this, but it's uh, true due to our uh, reductions, okay? And then uh, they intersect in this way. This is E, our P1 bundle, and this is E prime. And uh, the ruling is like this. So every component of the intersection is ruled for both P1 bundles. So basically, one can show that every, compo every connected component of the intersection is just a P1 cross P1, okay? And then we have F, and in, uh, in Y, so this is X, this is Y, this is S, and then I will use also <laughs> some product. Okay, so this is the blue line. <laughs> this is the image of one component. Y or Z? This is Y. And here we have, because the drawing is not finished. Uh, oh, okay. So the image, say D, of E prime is still a P1 bundle. Okay. And then we have another elementary contraction, which is again a smooth blow up of a surface. And here we have in Z two surfaces intersecting in one point, and this is G. Okay, so basically we get a picture like this, and uh, so G is the, the blow-up of two surfaces intersecting in points, and uh, in S we get this curve, C, and it's a minus one curve in the surface, so it has in the uh, anti-canonical degree one in the surface, but also in Y, because it's also a fiber of the blow-up of a surface here, okay? And then basically we just show that we can um, choose three different R primes which intersect each other, okay? To construct these three curves. And uh, um, so to show that uh, we can choose these three rays uh, uh, a prime with this property, I use, I need to assume again, I need a, a further reduction. I mean, <laughs> uh, because this is a very special property that uh, uh, the canonical class of the, the uh, yes, the canonical class of the surface is given by the restriction of the canonical class of Y, so it's reasonable that we have to do many reductions, okay? And uh, so there is a combinatorial analysis. Mm, 
of the cone of effective curves of x to show that we can actually construct uh, these three curves. Mm -hmm. So do it three times, but in such a way that they intersect. And then, uh, well, when, uh, when we do not assume that uh, there are no two-dimensional fibers, the strategy is the same. It's just a little bit more uh, complicated, but uh, I mean, the idea is the same. And in the end, um, I show that the surface is smooth, okay? But I cannot exclude that Y has a singularity. This is a pity, but uh, uh, so there, are, there is one type of two-dimensional fiber for which Y is singular, but the surface is smooth. So this type I cannot exclude. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I think that's it. Thank you.